When we talk about health, most people tend to go to what they eat, what foods are they having, what is their diet, but health and healthy habits go into so much more than that. It is your mind, it is your body, and it is your soul. Over the years, there have been many different healthy habits that I've implemented that have hands down changed my life. So today I've summarized it into seven. If we have not met already, hi, my name is Karis. I'm a real estate broker here inside Florida. And if you enjoy all things real estate, social media, and self-development, then you will enjoy this channel. So make sure you subscribe and stick around. Now, if you wanna learn seven healthy habits that have changed my life and may change yours too, then just keep on watching. Now, as always, I respect your time, so I'm gonna leave the chapters to the video right here. Let's dive into number one, which is making better decisions. Now, I used to be a very indecisive person and it's still something to this day that I will always work on. However, a habit that I did implement is when I would make a decision, I would commit to it. So I'm a very strategic person, in case you didn't already know this. So if there was a big decision that I had to make, I would weigh up pros and cons. If I made this decision, what would be the pros and cons? And if I made this decision, what would be the pros and cons? I would weigh it up, I would make a decision, and then I would commit to that decision. Once that was made, that was it. There's no looking back, there's no regrets, there's no, oh, I could have done this. You make a decision and you commit to it. One of the questions that I would often ask myself is, what would my highest and best version of myself do with this decision? Now, it could even be something as small as eating a certain thing, going to the gym, doing a certain thing for my business. When there was that decision, I would say, what would my highest and best version of myself say to that decision? For example, if it comes to going to the gym and I don't feel like it, well, what would my highest and best version of myself do? They would suck it up and they would go to the gym, even when you don't feel like it, because that's what discipline is. So another example would be waking up early. Most people know they likely should be waking up early, but making that decision and committing to it, if you know you're going to be waking up at six o'clock every day, Monday through Friday, make that decision, commit to it, and follow through. You know your highest and best version of you should be waking up at that time, so you're gonna do it without asking yourself how you feel, whether or not you should. You made that decision, so you're gonna commit to it. So maybe if you are someone who may be a little indecisive and ponder over things for too long, think about how you do one thing is how you do everything. So start with some of the smaller decisions in your life that you need to make, whether it be health, fitness, time to wake up, whether it be in your business, smaller decisions, strategically look at it, pros and cons, what would my highest best self do, make that decision and commit to it. And then maybe you can build up to start to do the same thing for these bigger decisions that you have. Another tip as well on making better decisions is also remembering that when your emotions are high, you have worse decision-making skills. If you need to sleep on something before you respond, do so. The second healthy habit that changed my life was daily walks. I know this sounds like a normal thing, but I make it a point for at least 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes at night to go out for a walk. I like to do it in the morning because I get the first light, I feel better, I clear my head, set my intentions for the day, and then at night it is a clearing, a de-stress, and a decompress of what happened during that day. Now, of course, there are many great physical benefits when it comes to walking. So if you're someone who's just starting your fitness journey, going for walks is a great thing. Get your steps in and start to move your body. It can also help a lot with joint health. It can clear your mind. It can naturally help you de-stress. If you are tired, chug some water and go out for a walk and you will come back feeling so refreshed. But one of the other things as well is that it can also help you get into a creative flow. So oftentimes when I'm walking, I'll come up with some great ideas, whether it be for business, for content, and it just kind of gets things stimulated. And it's also great to just be outside. You may see things that will spark an idea and it's just good to get in that creativity mindset. So daily walks are great for mind, body, and soul. Number three is reading daily. And there are a few different things I do when it comes to reading. I read the Bible and I also read a self-improvement book as well. Now there are many books that have changed my life over the last few years. 
So if you want a full video on those recommendations, then make sure you let me know in the comments below and I'll make that a separate video. So if I break down my reading that I do daily, in the morning I have a devotional that I read and then I read my Bible. So those are two things I do every single morning. Then in the afternoon slash early evening, I will read a self-improvement book. I read at least 20 pages every single day. I'm a big believer that if you're not growing, then you are dying. So you should always be reading and learning and expanding your mind. So reading some factual self-improvement books and if you're a fiction person, then maybe try and just do a little bit of both. But those kind of self-development books on business and mindset and all the different ways of creating a life that you want to live, those are the kind of books that I personally love and recommend to read too. So a 3B to this in terms of reading daily would be the audible version. So whenever I am walking, when I am driving, when I am getting ready in the morning, I am most times listening to a podcast, an audiobook, or an educational YouTube video. Try to limit the times you're listening to music when you are doing things and instead use that time to learn something. Number four is keeping your space tidy. I once heard a quote that always stuck with me that said your space or your environment is a reflection of your mind. And that is true. <laughs> when you are cluttered and you have stuff everywhere and things aren't neat and tidy, and it is very true. Statistically, people who have clutter and who have very untidy places and spaces that they live in, they statistically have more anxiety. Because if you think about it, if your space is clean, neat and tidy, you will have more focus because there's not the distractions of stuff everywhere. And this goes especially into your workspace. If you are someone who works from home or maybe you work at an office, just keep things as neat and as tidy as possible. Something I started doing a while ago that made this particular thing change my life was I do a nighttime reset. Every single night before I go to bed, I make sure everything is clean, tidy, and ready for the next day. Then going into the day, I'm not going into yesterday's mess. The fifth healthy habit that changed my life is becoming a morning person. Now I know some of you guys do not want to hear this, but it did change my life. There's a book called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod that changed the game when it comes to me trying to train myself in order to wake up early in the morning. So if you really want to learn how to do this, one, get that book. And number two is watch my video on tips on how to wake up early. I will leave it in the first link in the description below. It breaks down some of the best ways to help train yourself in order to wake up early. Do those two things and you will thank yourself. Training myself to get up early was one of the best decisions that I made a few years ago because it not only helped with me having more time, but it was also productivity that was great as well. Now I'll warn you if it's something that you want to do, it takes time to work up to it. It is not something that you can do overnight, but you will thank yourself once you find the ability to do so. By becoming a morning person, I have set habits that I do in the morning that help me focus on me at the start of the day. Before I let the world come in and cause some chaos in my life, I have time to focus on getting my mind right. I get time to focus on spending time with God. I have time to spend on going to the gym and exercising and do my walk. Being able to wake up early allowed me to have that time to myself in the morning. Number six is prioritizing and planning as much as you can. Now I am a planner and an organizer. It's a blessing and a curse. However, learning to be like that changed my life because I actually learned the value of my time. Being able to time block, to manage your time is a game changer when it comes to all aspects of your life and especially in your business as well. It will not only allow you to be more productive, but allows you to prioritize what things do you actually want to spend time on in your life? Are there things that you can outsource? Are there things that you can automate? If you can spend time on different organizational skills in order to prioritize and plan things in your life, you will get so much more done and you take away a lot of the stress and the overwhelm. I created a real estate planner. So for all my realtors who watch my videos, if you want one of those, it's in the link in the description below or go to thatrealtorshop.com. You'll find my 2024 planner, but it breaks down each day that is time blocked. So instead of just having your daily schedule of your to-do list, 
you instead have 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. all different slots of how you can fill up your day, but making sure you're prioritizing doing the important things first, which are usually your lead generation and your money-making activities. But if you do not plan out your days, plan out your weeks, you will waste so much time. I prioritize and plan every single day. And I know some people don't like to do that. They like to have a little bit more of a flexible schedule, but prioritize and plan as much as you can because it will change the way that you actually do things and you will value your time so much more. And you will get the most important things done, which is often what people don't do. They tend to push it off later on. The seventh healthy habit that changed my life and actually what I think is one of the most important and really had one of the biggest impacts in my life is I learned how to manage my stress. I used to be a very stressed person to the point that when I wasn't stressed out, I would then think about why I'm not stressed out and am I missing something and then I would stress out. It, it, was, it was not good. <laughs> and learning how to manage and control that changed my life. Now, one of the main factors that helped me manage my stress levels was me and my walk in my faith. I learned and understood that I am not in control and cannot be in control of everything. When it comes to dealing with situations that we often get stressed about, at the end of the day, it's gonna work out the way it's supposed to. Everything is already planned out for you. So being stressed over something does not solve anything. Who is a person of faith, Jesus says, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And that is so true. Stressing and worrying and being anxious about certain things, it is not gonna help the problem. And when I understood that, it changed the game. It just helped me understand that whether something comes up, whether something happens, a deal falls through, someone gets mad, this happens, that happens, whatever the situation is, at the end of the day, it's gonna work out the way it's supposed to. Worrying and stressing about it isn't gonna solve anything. And in five years, it's probably not gonna matter. In the description below, I will also leave a link to one of my other videos that I have where it's specifically on how to manage your stress. If you want to watch that, if you're someone who stresses a lot, then that video will definitely help. Knowing that God has got your back no matter what, and he is always looking out for what is best for you, it's just the best stress reliever you can possibly have. Okay, hopefully this video helped. If you are able to take even just one thing out of this and implement it, and it helps your life in any way, then I've done my job. If any of these specific things helped you in your life, then leave them down in the comments below. I would love to hear about it and I will see you in the next one.